Hello fellow Airstreamers and RVers. Well, using Starlink has this dilemma. With your Starlink router on the inside, you need to figure out how to run the dish cable to the outside. A common approach is with the router inside and somehow fishing the dish cable to an outside storage compartment and keep the rest of the cable in there. The problem for me at least, I would need to keep the compartment open while using it. And in my case, I only have one compartment and there's just so much stuff in there, I don't have room to keep the 75 foot cable uh, in it. I also thought about using Starlink just outside. I have an external uh, plug-in, but then hey, it's outside. Another solution I saw was on a large fifth wheel with tons of outside enviable compartments, one with power, so he plugged the router in there and ran the receiver cable out. Not bad. Anyway, uh, one day I was poking around YouTube, like I'm sure many of you do, and came across what I think is a very elegant solution. An external port to plug the dish cable into. On the channel Keep Your Daydream, Mark and Trish were interviewing a guy who customizes Airstreams in Alabama and de demonstrated what he had done. And I'll put the link below. In the video, he was a bit short on specifics, so I contacted Ronnie Dennis and he graciously gave me the parts he used. How he figured this out, I do not know, but I'll tell you, I would not have found it on my own. Anyway, I got all the parts. I'll put the complete list below and where I sourced them, and I'm giving it a go. And as part of uh, doing this, I decided to expand what Ronnie only briefly described and film the whole process for those who would like to do something similar. And yep, you have to cut the cable. Not a big deal. I did it for the first time. You can do it too. But before I start cutting, let me show you the co core components. First is the smart plug port. Now it comes, you can buy several versions of this. And uh, this is what Ronnie used. Uh, and I'll come, to that, uh, come back to that uh, in, in a minute. The second component this is what gets modified for the um, smart plug. And this is what sits in between the wall of your RV or Airstream. And this part comes out of the smart plug where you'll plug the um, cable into from the outside. And then from the outside, this is the cam lock that has the end of the ethernet uh, connection from the dish cable that plugs into this and locks into place. That is an elegant solution. So as far as the, the smart plug modification itself goes, I called a smart plug and asked if they had any uh, interest in this and they said they did. They're trying, they get a lot of uh, inquiries about this right now and they don't have a solution. So they decide they sent me two of these for me to mess with. So let me show you what it looks like on the inside. The one they sent me is a dual looks like Ethernet uh, connection. But if you turn it over, what you'll discover is that there are four screws that you can take apart then this comes out and, and this is, is free. Well, all we would need to do is essentially drill a hole in this plate to create this customization. Now in the case of Ronnie, uh, Dennis, he had one of these that was stacked on top of each other and I think uh, he just removed one and drilled one there. In my case, I showed this to my neighbor Ed and uh, saying, really I need a little plate, doesn't have all the stuff on the back, just flat that will fit up inside the other component. And he thought for a moment, he went to his closet and he pulled out an old OtterBox cell phone case, he said, this will do the trick. 15 minutes later, he had cut 
the OtterBox case into that shape. And lo and behold, we have the external port that we now are going to attach to the side of the uh, Airstream. A key uh, component of this, this is a right angle. So when we put the connector on the cable that runs from the inside uh, where the router is to, to here, it comes in at a 90 degree angle. That way you're not running into you know, a distance problem where uh, this sits inside the wall. So it can either be up or down, but it is a 90 degree. So the other components that I have, the connectors that we use on the ends of the Starlink cable that we cut are shielded. So be sure to get shielded. You can buy a pack of, I don't know, 15 or 20 for about eight bucks. The second thing that I did was also get a pack of these rubber grommets that will go on the inside and these will seal the hole uh, on the inside of the trailer. I just drilled a hole in one of them and I will run the cable through there and then seal the one inch hole that uh, I drilled on the inside. So, Let's, let's start cutting. I did end up buying, because uh, I didn't have one, a, a $50 uh, cutter, crimper, and you'll, you'll need that. Also, these connectors are what are called pass-through uh, uh, connectors, I think. So the wires will come out all the way to the end, and it's with this tool that everything gets crimped and cut. So, here's my Starlink cable. I, I have about six feet from the, where the router goes, and I am going to cut it. Okay, I guess we're in business now. This is, this is the cable from the router. So if you're going to use my solution for plugging the hole in the inside, be sure to put this on before you put the connector on. It'll just make that easier. So this is the, this is the other end. This is going to be on the outside. And before I configure that, let me give you a little tip. When it's finally done, this is what it looks like with the Ethernet coming uh, so it will plug into the, the port. I found that out of the box, this hole was, this hole was slightly too small. So I used an X-Acto knife to kind of trim away some plastic on the inside so that the shielded connector would um, fit uh, when, I, when I put it together. So otherwise, uh, you might have a little difficulty. So, we'll just open this up, take, out, take off the compression components, Put these components back in and just pu push this out of the way. Well now we're going to trim away, probably trim away a good three inches uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, it, it's uh, not easy to feed those connectors in with these wires. But anyway, using this tool, we're now going to cut back and this is just cutting the outside casing of this. I ran into a little problem in that it did not cut all the way through. 
I don't know if that's a Starlink issue, um, but I ended up using my trusty X-Acto knife to finish the cut all the way through. And I did this once before just to test it and it worked, so, but I'm not that good at it. Okay, so you pull off the outside and strip away this, this, uh, I guess, uh, it's aluminum foil. And inside, there is, this is just plastic that I'll just cut off here. All right. The guts of this are four pairs of twisted wires. And there's also this other small, looks like a braided wire. I suspect that somewhere on the Starlink site, there'll be a disclaimer that says, hey, if you cut this little cable, this little braided wire, you probably avoid, uh, will void your warranty, run the risk of death and dismemberment, and if you're struck by lightning, they have no responsibility. But I did it, and there we go. So now I'm going to untwist all of these and get them as straight as I can. Um, and I won't bore you with, with that process, but I will say that there is a particular order that these little bitty wires must go uh, into the shielded connector. And you view it with the, with the clip down, so the wires are gonna be coming in through uh, the bottom of this. And there is a standard uh, RJ45 uh, co color coding system. And the one this uses is, uh, uh, I think it's a TIA568B, uh, and that is the, uh, the order where the wires go through this um, connector. I, and I'll, I'll be honest, the first time it took me about a half an hour to do it. Um, and I had to uh, make sure that I had a pair of tweezers, and I also had a small jeweler's uh, magnifying glass from, from my wife. So that allowed me to make sure that the order that I was getting the wires in uh, was consistent with that uh, RJ45 color coding system. So rather than bore you with uh, me uh, fuddling through this, I will uh, stop and we'll uh, come back when I've got it all done. Okay, about, uh, that one took me about 20 minutes. And you can see here the wires passing through the connector in the proper order. Now, inevitably, you push one wire through and it maybe gets over into the wrong hole. So I was constantly examining the end of where the wires were coming through the end of this connector to make sure that they were next to the, the wire it was supposed to be. If there was a gap, I had to pull it out and, and put it back in again. And that's where the tweezers come in. So you can get inside the, uh, smart, uh, the uh, connector and push that wire all the way through. So once we have them in the proper order and we verified that, uh, according to our RJ45 color diagram, now we're gonna work all of the wires down all the way to the casing, and uh, that's where the little tool comes in. So I'm just gonna work these wires all the way down as far as I can get them, all the way to the, to the casing. And that's why I had you make sure that you had enough um, room uh, with the casing so that you could work all of these wires down to it. So we cut off about three inches or so. 
and I'm just trying to grab this blue one. Okay, we're still working it, working them down, getting them untwisted as much as we can. And uh, essentially pulling them one at a time even to get them to straighten out. And um, not as easy as it looks anyway that's why it takes about 20 minutes to do this one side um, my caution to you is to make sure that you have enough coffee in you when you start this process otherwise you'll just be hating yourself and uh, another tip that seemed to work is cut the ends of the, these wires off at like a 45 degree angle so they're kind of like a little spear going through the hole of the of the connector I'm just going to pull, keep pulling these through here. You know, you have to be really motivated to want to do this. And so I was just motivated because I thought it was the slickest solution. I guess I can use my tool here. Oh, that helps. Nothing like needle nose pliers to the rescue. Don't worry about hurting the ends of these, they get cut off anyway. All right, well, we've almost got it. We've almost got it all the way down to the, to the here. Right. I'm just gonna push this all the way into the connector as far as we can go. Okay, almost there. Sorry if I get off camera here. I'm not that good at this. I know this probably seems like amateur hour right now, but hey, I've never done this before. Okay. Looks like, looks like I've got that all the way in to the connector. Okay, I'm going to twist the wires here and next it's going to go into the right RJ, there it is. That's that's the one. So these wires go all the way in here and the connector gets clipped on there. This is the magic of that tool. It's nice and in and we clamp it. It clamps and cuts the wires at the end. So, the next component is to um, slide on, slide this in. Slide this in to the cam lock. And this, and this is where enlarging that fitting came into play. This little, this component helps, goes on the inside, helps strengthen it. And this part goes on the end of that. And all of this then gets compression locked into place. So before you lock all this down, What I did is I made sure that this clipped in there really nice. So I'm pushing, I'm pushing this all the way into the jack. And I'm gonna do, do that. I'll cam lock it in. 
everything's pushed up against there. Now I run compression fit the wire so everything's nice and tight. There. So with that, everything is tight. This goes again into the modified smart plug, gets lined up and cam locked in. And now we have our outside connection once we install this end into our modified smart plug. I did, by the way, see that smart plug has a single coax cable uh, uh, plug that maybe you could just take the coax off and drill the one inch hole to fit this connector in without having to actually jury rig some plate uh, all by itself. So um, that I didn't know that was available, but uh, this worked just fine. So before I so we would just do the same component uh, connector onto the other end of the Starlink uh, running from the router and it gets plugged into um, this fitting. So here's the completed version of what it would look like on the side of the trailer and in it goes and locks into place. Before I drilled anything into the trailer, I made sure that this worked. So I started up the Starlink from the other cable running from the router and made sure that everything worked so that I knew that I had the wires in the right uh, spot. So very critical, I wouldn't drill anything uh, before I made sure that everything worked. So with that uh, being done, the next step is to install and do the components uh, on the side of the trailer. I hope you find this uh, process uh, interesting, if nothing, nothing else. Thanks, and we'll go on to the trailer. Here's where I've decided to put the modified smart plug housing, and it's at the front of the trailer, slightly behind the uh, propane tanks, and to the, to the right of this rib. So I first created a little template uh, on the front of the trailer with the gasket that comes with the smart plug. So my approach, and mind you, I've never done this before, so who knows what calamities will ensue, but it's to drill the four holes for the screws and then drill larger holes at the curve of this uh, template where the smart plug goes and then cut it out using a handheld um, reciprocating saw blade. So uh, wish me luck. See how cutting this is going to work here. Okay, well, that's going to work, and I'm going to uh, turn this off and I'll continue on. Okay, that was a little more difficult than I thought, uh, only because I didn't realize, the, realize there's two pieces of metal in there. So, so this is the back side, and this is the front side. So I'm going to finish it off with a little bitty uh, Dremel that I have to finish the edges. But, but make note, uh, just by dumb, stupid luck, 
I cut above this other uh, rib. So I put my finger in there and thought, oh God, I, good thing I didn't uh, try to cut through that rib. So that was stupid luck. I was so con concentrating on this rib, I forgot totally about this rib. So that's a little tale of caution. So I'm gonna go and finish this now. So my approach now, after thinking about it on the inside and outside, I'm not going to come up through the bottom like I originally thought because I don't want to drill through this uh, rib. So I'm going to come down from the top on the inside. So I'll drill a one inch hole, feed the Starling cable through to the modified smart plug, and then uh, it'll have a, just a rubber plug on the inside. It'll be hidden mostly below uh, the table in our configuration. And given the fact that I've already cut this hole, I'm kind of stuck with whatever I have to do on the inside. So that's the approach. Here's the hole I drilled on the inside. Now I did spend about 20 bucks and bought a tungsten carbide hole saw for metal from holepro.com. And I also had purchased uh, from another supplier, a one inch plug. So these one inch plugs will fit in there just nicely. And the way I've constructed this is the Starling cable is going to feed through. And before I put that connector on, I drilled a hole in one of these plugs and um, put that on the cable. So once I fish the uh, Star Starling cable through to the outside opening, I will simply plug the hole with this uh, rubber plug. And you'll see that this is where the table sits. So this is below the table, so you won't really see it. And by the way, this uh, car carbide tip drilled a very clean hole. I, I didn't have to finish it off at all. Okay, well, let's show you what the final installation looks like. So it's underneath the table here. Let's just sit that right down there. You can see the exit hole from the inside uh, at the top. And I tucked the router in uh, underneath the cushions and it's right next to a speaker in, in my particular Airstream. So it's out of the way and uh, easy to, uh, to plug in and plug, plug off. Let's go outside and we'll look at what that is. There's the dish in the background. And there's the final installation. And with a quick turn of the cam lock, I'm ready to stow. Well, anyway, I hope you found this interesting and at least uh, save you some grief if you think you might want to do a similar installation. All told, I probably have $200 into it uh, with the hole saw and the crimpers plus all the components. I did now end up buying uh, three of, of each of the components just in case I screwed something up or wanted to mess with it. So uh, um, my estimate is really just for the bare minimums. Anyway, uh, thanks you to um, Trish and, and Mark at uh, Keep Your Daydream and Ronnie Dennis. And I uh, appreciate the info from him. And um, good luck.